Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Today we are continuing on with these symmetrical still life objects. And today I'm going to be painting an object that I use at least twice a day. And I love it. It's one of my favorite things that I own. It is my V60 ceramic pour over dripper thing. So I'm going to make a painting of this ceramic dripper and I'm going to play with the color palette a little bit today and I'm going to do a white and yellow color palette. It's actually one of my favorite color palettes and funny enough, I don't really make that many paintings in a yellow and white color palette, but I love that color palette. So that's what I'm going to try today. And I'm kind of excited because this white object is going to just pick up a lot of reflected light on the surface and really challenge my ability to mix colors properly. So let's do this. Let's paint. Okay, so this is painting number 13 and it is Wednesday and we are halfway through this week of still life objects from the kitchen. And today I am painting one of my favorite things in the world. And it is my V60 pour over. I use this thing all the time. If you're into coffee and you like fruity coffees, like natural processed Ethiopian coffees or something, you really can't beat brewing that kind of coffee with a V60. It just is perfect. So it's one of my favorite items that I own. And I know I, <laughs> it's got to just make me look like such a loser hipster nerd. But seriously, a V60 just pulls out all these beautiful aromatics out of a coffee. So I love it. I also have one of those little bee house brewers that I think makes really great coffee for more of like a chocolatey or a dark fruit kind of coffee. I love coffee. I love the morning ritual of waking up and grinding the beans and turning on the kettle and brewing the coffee. I just love it. There's something about it that is fantastic. I'm not that much of a coffee snob that I won't drink other coffees. To be honest, like right now, as I'm recording this, I have in my hand <laughs> a cup of Folgers coffee because I'm currently at my parents' house and they make Folgers coffee and I will drink Folgers coffee at my parents' house. I know some of you are just disgusted to hear that but Folgers coffee reminds me of my parents and I love it and I, I love my parents so when I'm here there's something about just drinking crappy Folgers coffee that I'm cool with. I'm actually in northwest Indiana right now so me and the girls Katie and Agnes and Cecily all drove over the weekend to northwest Indiana to where we both are from. We both grew up in Lake County, Indiana, just right outside of Chicago. It's like an hour outside of the city. For those of you who don't know the Midwest, it's, um, it's just right on the bottom of Lake Michigan. So Lake Michigan is kind of like this big, weird teardrop shape. And right on the bottom of Lake Michigan, it's like this little top most northwest corner of Indiana, Lake County. It's where I grew up. And that's where I'm at right now. And I'm actually in my parents' house in their basement to get away from some of the noise upstairs. And right next to me is a shelf full of green beans and canned vegetables and homemade jellies. And in the next room over in the cellar is literally about like 600 bottles of wine. Because my dad is a winemaker and there is a ton of wine down here. I can't wait to drink a lot of it with my dad. <laughs> so we're going to be here for the next like four weeks or so. And I'm going to keep painting here and drink some wine with my dad and spend some time with family and let my girls get to spend some time with the grandparents. So anyways... All that to say, I'm not too much of a coffee snob, even though I really appreciate a good cup of coffee that's properly brewed, but I still just like coffee. I'll drink the crappy, charcoaly tasting coffee just the same as any other coffee, and I love it. So this painting, 
I am going straight up for this bright yellow color palette with the white ceramic dripper in there. And I gotta say, I love yellow paintings. Yellow paintings are fantastic. There was this awesome show at St. Charles in Baltimore, the gallery St. Charles, that was called Limoncello, and it was all yellow paintings. They even painted the walls yellow. It was a fantastic show. So good. But I just love yellow paintings. Some of my favorites are like Voyard's interiors. There's this one Voyard painting, The Yellow Curtain, where there's this woman pulling back a curtain that's sort of revealing this pattern. Beautiful interior, beautiful yellow painting. And actually, one of my really good friends, who's also one of the best painters that I know, Shangram Majumdar, made a painting based off of this Vuillard painting. I believe it's called Interrupted or Interrupted 2, something like this. And honestly, I just love the color palette of the Shangram painting too. It's using this white and yellow color scheme with these neutrals and a little bit of this green red complement going on in the pattern. But gosh, I gotta say, a yellow painting with white is like the best. I just love that color scheme in a painting. And I don't know why I don't do it more, but here I'm doing it today and I'm really happy to be doing it because it's one of my favorite color schemes. And if you don't know Shangram's work, definitely check out Shangram's work. And to be honest, I owe so much of my color sensibility to Shangram. I worked with Shangram as a GTI. This is a position at MICA called a graduate teaching intern. So essentially, I was a teaching intern for one of his classes that was an awesome class. So it was a double studio class that started at 9 a.m. and ended at 9 p.m. It was just this marathon class. And it was amazing. It was called Height by Width. The transformation that you saw from students coming into that class to the time they were leaving was insane. It was just a great class. And Shangram is just an amazing teacher. I've honestly learned so much from Shangram. He probably wasn't even trying to teach me anything, but <laughs> he's just one of those types of people that you spend time around and you hear him talk about painting. And you hear the feedback that he gives students and critiques. And it's just always so on point and so nuanced and specific. He's excellent. So I highly encourage you to check out Shangram's work if you've never spent time with it. Look him up online. He's showing all the time. And he's also just an amazing person. I'm so lucky to be able to call Shangram a close friend. And I just love Shangram. I love... Annalise and their beautiful daughter, Isadora. But I'm totally digressing, and it's because Shangram's worth digressing over. He's an amazing painter, and he's made a huge impact in my own life in painting. But there are so many awesome yellow paintings and painters who deal with the color yellow in amazing ways. One of them is just the painter Van Gogh. His paintings, his yellow paintings, his landscapes that deal with yellow, and a lot of even his interiors and portraits where he handles the color yellow as a primary agent in the composition. Those pieces are fantastic. They're so good. I know Van Gogh is talked about all the time, but if you haven't just thought about how he uses the color yellow, and then even those yellows that tilt into greens, they're just amazing. Fantastic handling of that color. Another painter that I love how they handle the color yellow is Alex Katz. Some of his portraits where yellow is the background color are beautiful, but one of them that I got to see in person, a, a few of these paintings in person in Chicago a few years back, were his yellow house paintings. They're these huge paintings that will consume an entire wall in a gallery easily. And gosh, he's got to be painting these things with like brooms or humongous brushes because the brushwork is so loose and so fresh while it's like this massive, gigantic painting. But these paintings, when you stand in front of them, they just glow yellow at you. They're so full of light, beautiful surfaces, beautiful compositions. Alex Katz, he really handles yellow so well. 
Another painter, Alice Neal. I think she just uses yellow in this super intelligent and nuanced way where she almost uses the brightness of yellow to offset the flesh tones in her portraits and in her paintings. And her compositions are just the type that you can like fall right into. Or maybe they just feel like they're falling out at you. Some of them, especially the more vertical oriented compositions, just feel like the content of the painting could tip right out. They're fantastic compositions. Alice Neal, check out her work. If we go back in time a little bit, Corot, we talked about Corot a little bit, but Corot, his sunset paintings or his transitional light paintings where it's either early, early morning or late in the day as the night is beginning to set in, those paintings, I don't know how he created them, but the color space of the atmosphere and the way he handles yellow as a glowing agent in the sky of those paintings is just exquisite. So definitely check out some Corot paintings, landscapes. I highly recommend seeing Corot in person because you can see these online. They look like, oh, whatever, pretty normal painting. But man, when you see a Corot painting in person and you see how efficiently he handles the brushwork and how well he can handle direct painting where he's just mixing the paint and laying it on directly. And then how he can balance that with indirect painting and lots of building up of thin, transparent layers of glazed paint. It's just so perfect. He's, he's an excellent painter, especially for materiality and surface. There's a few galleries in the Louvre that are just full of little Corot oil sketches, his little landscapes that he was painting on site. And man, those paintings are just so fresh. They look like they were just painted yesterday. If they had some content in them that showed like modern vehicles and buildings and cars, I would totally believe they were just painted because the paint handling is so fresh. The surfaces are so fresh. They're just so luscious and mm, the paint is to die for. Another painter, one of my favorite painters, Fairfield Porter. The way he handles yellow and yellow green in the landscape is just so raw and in your face. He can just get away with these big blocks of yellow. And the way that he chisels out the shape and the way he handles the flatness of paint on the surface, but also balancing that flatness with depicting form. It's so interesting and was so radical the way he was painting at the time he was painting. He was just such a trendsetter. So many painters have followed in Fairfield Porter's wake with how they handle flatness and texture and depicting form in this really clarified, simplified manner that he just did so excellently. I love Fairfield Porter. But his color and the way he handles yellow is also just to die for. So I could go on and on. There's also this Czech painter, Frantisek Kupka. If you've never seen any of his work, there's this self-portrait of his called The Yellow Scale that's at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston that is just so moody and introspective has this weird psychology to it that all just comes from the color yellow consuming the entire composition. So beautiful. So let's talk about this painting where I'm at, painting this V60 and how I'm handling this. You'll notice at the beginning of this painting, I really relied on using perspective and those sort of basic drawing one things to properly draw this object in space and make it feel like it's believable sitting on top of this piece of yellow foam. And I was using things like the X, drawing the X through a rectangular plane to find the center of that rectangular plane in space and building all of the ellipse shapes out of that. So I definitely took a while at the beginning of this painting doing all of the measurement and comparison of how this object is sitting in space. So I was pulling out my measurement device. I was doing a lot of just comparing everything I could with everything else in the painting. And that just comes down to being really sensitive to every single mark that you put down. 
making sure that its direction and space, how it's triangulating with the other angles in the painting all match up. And, you know, maybe for some painters, they just wouldn't care about that at all. But for me, when I'm painting this object and I'm really wanting to sort of respect the object and spend time with it and deconstruct it, really investigate it and look at it and paint it as faithfully as I can as it's sitting in front of me, I really take my time with measuring and try to respect the object as much as possible. It might be a weird way to talk about it, but I think I've always felt this way as I'm painting objects, just the same as when I paint people. And it probably has a lot to do with when I started out with painting and painting people. It's a huge thing to ask somebody to sit for you. So when they actually say, yes, I would like to sit for a painting, you feel this huge weight of responsibility to honor them and to respect them for giving you that privilege of just having them sit for you and also giving you that kind of permission to look at them for this really extended amount of time. It's such a vulnerable thing that someone would allow you to do that. And for them to give you that amount of trust, for me, I have to respect them as much as I possibly can and try to do justice to them and paint as much as I can. So I think a little bit of that has also spilled over into still life painting for me. So when I'm looking at a still life object, I almost think of it as if it were some kind of little object that also deserves some kind of respect from me. It's made of similar material and matter that everything in the earth is made from, and I'm going to respect that. I'm going to respect it as an object that has dignity and that it's a physical thing that exists. And also, it's an amazing tool that I get to use. Some still life objects, especially like this kind of object, where it's an object that I use multiple times a day, and it becomes something that I interact with on a daily basis. I just naturally want to respect it and do it justice in a painting, kind of in a similar way to a portrait. So the other thing that I found really challenging and fun in this painting is just how much reflected light happens in this piece. Yellow just seems to glow sometimes, especially when it's that right hue, and it just throws so much reflected colored light into everything else. So the whole bottom cone of the V60, even though it's white, the paint colors that I was mixing up were really yellow because it was just picking up so much of that yellow of the piece of foam that the V60 is resting on. And I love that. I love that weird moment where you're mixing a color and it just doesn't look right on the palette. But then when you get it up into the context and it's next to those other colors and it makes sense within the context of the painting, as soon as you place it, it just clicks and makes sense. That's just such a satisfying moment for a painter, and that's something that I'll never get bored with. When you can make a color just fasten into a painting properly, it's so satisfying. It's one of the best feelings. So yeah, that happened a lot in this painting with painting this white object that's just receiving so much reflected light off of other objects surrounding it. And this object was a challenge to paint today. It was a blast to paint, but it was a challenge. I went into it thinking, oh, this will be a pretty easy object to paint. It was a little bit difficult, and I'm really glad that I took the time in the beginning to do some of that figuring out of the perspective of the object and being patient with the measurement phase of the painting, all the beginning of the painting where I'm drawing a lot. So that paid off a bit, and I was able to enjoy the process of the painting a bit more. But my method was pretty slow in terms of color mixing. I really took my time and mixed almost each little shape of paint as I went throughout the entire piece. I didn't really do guess mixtures of paint. I just went in and mixed it and held it up until it sort of disappeared into the color I was trying to match. I was able to do that because of the kind of light that I was using on the painting and on the setup. I had really bright light on both, and it was about equal light on both things. So I was able to get away with doing that kind of a process. The only thing that I noticed in the painting that I kind of had to fudge on just a little bit was that the highlights 
we're getting clipped a little bit because the glossy nature of the ceramic was punching back a really bright highlight in my eyes. And my white paint was not nearly as bright as that highlight actually was. So if I really wanted to accommodate that highlight and keep it in the gamut of the painting proportional to all the other colors in the painting, I would have had to have a pretty bright light on the surface of the painting. And I didn't do that today. So that's the painting for today. I love yellow paintings, <laughs> if you can't tell. And this was a real joy to just make a simple painting that was all about yellow and all about one of my favorite objects that I own, this little V60 ceramic brewer. So enjoy your coffee today. If you've never done a pour over before or never learned how to make pour over coffee, it's not a scam. It's not just some fake thing that hipsters like to do. It really does make coffee a lot better. But I gotta say, you gotta do it with good coffee beans. So you gotta find a good, reliable roaster nearby you. In Baltimore, we're lucky. We have a lot of good coffee roasters in the area that source really good beans and they're constantly roasting things that are in season. And it's awesome. So go pick up a V60 pour over brewer. They're pretty affordable and they really make your coffee better if you learn how to brew coffee with it. I hope you all have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow and we will continue with these symmetrical still life objects from the kitchen. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.